From movies to comics, to your favorite Halloween costume, zombies have been in and out of fantasy media for as long as we've all been alive. The idea that a person who passed away could be reanimated as one of a horde of mindless, nearly invulnerable monsters that attack the living fascinates the morbid among us. But where did the idea of zombies come from? Their origins can be traced to tales in Haitian voodoo culture, which extend back hundreds of years. There are countless tales in Haitian culture of persons dying and being revived by a witch doctor. The reanimated person is harmless to other people, but is unaware of who he once was. This has many people talking about how a zombie apocalypse might actually happen in the near future. That leads us to this episode, where we will be talking about three real-life zombie cases from across the world. Seattle Zombie Woman In May 2021, an incident outside an apartment building in Seattle went viral after a recording of it was posted on TikTok. The video showed a pale-faced woman with a shaved head, wearing just one shoe. The woman was limping and howling, as if she was in extreme pain, but unable to speak. She appeared to be bleeding and passerby kept their distance as she stumbled across the path. Police officers attempted to detain her, but she continued walking and crying out in pain before eventually more officers turned up to the scene and restrained her. In the end of the video, you can hear her crying out that she didn't want to go to the hospital in between incoherent groans. The footage was posted online, and the TikTok user who shared the first video of the woman described the scene in her caption, the face torn clothes, three strains of hair, agonizing screams. I was shook. Users quickly labeled her the Seattle zombie woman. Within days, the original poster deleted the video, but that didn't stop the theories and wild rumors that went around, only encouraged them. Everyone was talking about it, desperate for an explanation. Theories ranged from the video being a part of an elaborate marketing scheme for an upcoming movie to drugs and domestic abuse, all the way to the woman being an all-out zombie. With things not slowing down anytime soon, the original poster of the video uploaded the following update, asking users to show some compassion for the woman. Living in a city like Seattle, is it not uncommon for people to not have the resources to properly care for their mental health, their housing, for their addiction? And so, unfortunately, it's not abnormal to hear someone screaming like that in the middle of the day. When I looked out my window and I saw her face, I was truly shook and a little bit scared because I've never seen someone like that. It's not clear who the woman is or why she was in distress. Some people thought it was fake and was part of filming for a movie. Some people thought she really was a zombie. Some people thought she was in an accident. Some people thought she was having a mental breakdown. The truth is not known. But in May of 2022, the truth behind the whole bizarre stunt would finally be revealed. Body cam footage from the officers attending the incident, which obviously continued rolling after the TikTok stopped, showed officers confused as the woman had no visible injuries, and more importantly, was wearing costume makeup and fake blood. The whole thing had been an elaborate stunt set up by a woman named Kimberly Kasai, Kimberly had extreme views about the COVID-19 vaccine and decided to pull the stunt in order to warn people of the dangers of taking the vaccine themselves. Now, this first story might be a hoax, but the next one is not. Kelvin Santos. On June 1st, 2012, Two-year-old Kelvin Santos was in critical condition at Abelardo Santos Hospital in Belém, northern Brazil, where he was receiving treatment for pneumonia. The prognosis wasn't good, and doctors battled to save the toddler. Despite their best efforts, Kelvin passed away at the hospital from pneumonia and respiratory failure at 7 p.m., and his devastated family was handed his tiny body in a plastic bag and sent home to grieve. The Brazilian funeral tradition is to bury the dead within 48 hours of their passing, so the family got to work 
planning the young boy's funeral for the following day. Kelvin's body was laid in an open coffin overnight, and grieving relatives were permitted to come and view him and say their goodbyes before the service the next day. An hour before the funeral was due to start, Kelvin's father, Antonio Santos, and other family members were in the room when the impossible happened. Kelvin sat up in his coffin, looked at Antonio, and asked, Daddy, can I have some water? Everyone began to scream. The boy they grieved had been reanimated, brought back to them. Whatever it was, they didn't care. They were just so happy he was alive. But as quickly as the incident happened, their hopes were dashed. Kelvin laid back down in the coffin, closed his eyes and stopped breathing. He had died once again. Antonio picked up his son and rushed him back to Abelardo Santos Hospital. Doctors poured over Kelvin, fascinated by the modern miracle. But sadly, they confirmed there were no signs of life in the boy. Taking his deceased son home once again, Antonio decided to delay the funeral, hoping that whatever happened earlier would happen again and Kelvin would be brought back to them. By 5 p.m., with no more movement or signs of life, Kelvin Santos was buried. But the question remains, what happened that day? How can someone that died hours before be brought back to life, even for a few seconds? Well, if you think that was convincing, wait for the next one as things get out of hand. Dubbing this the most convincing case that modern day zombies actually exist. Clairvius Narcis. In Haiti, on April 30th, 1962, Clairvius Narcis checked into the Albert Schweitzer Hospital. Clairvius complained of feeling like bugs were crawling on his skin and had a high fever. His condition quickly worsened and nurses at the hospital offered him a room. Doctors pronounced him dead two days later. His immediate family organized a funeral and buried his body at Lestere Community Cemetery. They buried him according to custom, nailing the casket shut. Narcy's grave was disturbed at some point after his funeral. A Bokor, or Haitian voodoo sorcerer, dug him up and took his body out during the night, reanimating his corpse. Clairvius was then transported to a sugar plantation where he was beaten, chained, and made to consume a potion that left him with memory loss, effectively rendering him incapable of thinking for himself. When he arrived, he met people in a similar state, men and women who had died and been brought back to life by the Bokor. The Bokor continuously administered fresh injections of the same drug to keep Narcy's zombie-like state of mind while he was working in the fields. According to Clairvius, one of the other workers found the working conditions to be intolerable deciding to take matters into his own hands by murdering their Bokor ruler. The remaining zombies took advantage of the opportunity to leave the plantation now that their captivity was over. Clairvius escaped once the voodoo priest passed away and the regular medication stopped. Eventually finding his way back to his family's house, 18 years after his death, Clairvius approached Angelina as she was shopping in a small market and introduced himself. He introduced himself by a childhood nickname that only the two of them knew as evidence that he was her brother. Even though Angelina was understandably horrified to her very core, she helped the rest of the family conduct an inquiry. This investigation proved Narcisse to be the person he claimed to be. He was in fact Angelina's sibling. Clairvius also gave an explanation for why he had delayed returning home earlier. The fact that he had argued with his brother shortly before his passing. The tale of Clairvius generated some startling headlines. Everything that happened to him, from the seconds before he checked himself into the hospital to find his sister over two decades later, all took place while he was still cognizant, but in a state that was very close to vegetative. Clairvius could clearly remember when he was pronounced dead by the physicians and then buried alive. He further said when the Bokor dug him out shortly after, he was awake. He still carried the burden of his two years spent as a slave, and he recalled spending every waking hour working the plantation from sunrise to dusk. Only once was this extremely lengthy day broken up for a small supper break. Many medical professionals and researchers looked into the case in the years that followed. The fact that many witnesses had attested to Clairvius's death 
and that it had been confirmed by two American doctors who had examined him at the time was particularly puzzling. Numerous theories have been circulated up over the years, one of which being that Clarvius was given a cocktail of tranquilizers that included puffer fish venom. At the age of 72, Clarvius passed away in 1994, and this time, he wasn't brought back to life. With no real explanation for what happened to either Kelvin or Clarvius, is it possible that they were both turned into zombies? Far away from the glamour of Hollywood films, there are actually many cases like the ones discussed today throughout human history, showing the term zombie might not just be fantasy anymore. And who knows, you could be the next one.